マスクぐらいつけろナイス Yo guys, you want to hear a spicy conspiracy? Adding features to late game development is always a nightmare. <laughs> Let me explain why. So, when two people love each other very much, <laughs> they start a relationship together, right? And at first, you're all delicate and sensitive with them. You know, you make sure you're on top of your hygiene and pick up dirty underwear off the floor when they come over. You pretend like you know how to cook, you know, just little things like that. But, kids, Inevitably, your true colors will start to show. You eventually just stop caring about all that stuff when you guys spend enough time together. <laughs> you see, game development is a lot like a relationship. After coding enough hours on a project, you just inevitably get less patient with the project. You just throw your hands in the air and just begin to write some of the laziest code from then on out, just to get the goddamn thing done. <laughs> You don't believe me? Well, just look at some of the leaked code comments from people that make games like Half Life 2 and Portal and such. This is bad dumb code, and more importantly, it's bad dumb code that doesn't make any sense here. And so, why do I tell you all this? Well, I want you to meet Quormon. This is a game project that is almost ready for release. It's almost there. Quormon is a virtual pet game where you raise and battle a pet using real world steps as currency. But, like I was alluding to before, I need to add one of those late game features that I'm just dreading to do, despite how cool or useful that feature actually might be. And so today, I just want to take you along with me as I struggle adding this feature. So now, what exactly is this feature that I want to add? Well, I want to add a decoration system. You see, without getting too much into the weeds of my soon to release Quormon app, and trust me, I can talk about it all day if you let me. In Quormon, you own a home in which all of your Quormon live in, and you can decorate it with various items. But at the moment, there is no way to arrange the furniture. You see, all these items are just placed randomly in this room, and currently it's just stuck like this forever. But I desperately need to change that, and adding a decoration system is how we're going to do it. So. Let's get started. Now, I've coded so many features for this game at this point that it's impossible to predict how many will already support a decoration feature, versus how many will need to be modified, to what degree do they need to be modified, and how many new features will I have to create to support this feature. Hopefully you see the problem that I'm facing right now. And so, what better way to get this done than to commit to a livestream full of people who will shame you for the rest of your career if you quit. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is just plant my tush right here, start a timer, and not get up for anything until the feature is complete, so that you can watch the insanity unfold as we figure out just how long it's actually gonna take. <laughs> oh, yeah. Enjoy. <laughs> but wait, 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 before we do, I want you to take a guess in the comments. Who are you? Yo Yo Daddio, Rage Shadow Legends in the house, listen up. Wait a second, that means... This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends? Yeah, bucko. But look, I'll keep this simple. If you're interested in training and upgrading things, you need to put down this Quarimon crap and download Raid. In Raid, you collect a bunch of unique champions from the hundreds of champions available. And what do you do with these champions? Use them to run through bad guys like an ice cream cone on a hot summer day. And when that starts to get tough, you can upgrade your champions and get right back to slapping enemies around. Ooh, a renegade sorceress with bulletproof skin. A bear looking hybrid ogre thing with a beard. Sweet. Whoa, no way, they put a black man in this game? Dude, this game is tight. Okay, and in what fun ways can I use these champions? You must not watch a lot of YouTube. There is a campaign with many enemies to slap around and level up your champions. Raid also has tons of great features like arena PvP battles and clan boss battles with weekly rewards. Wait, wait, wait. so you want me to- I wasn't done. There is even a brand new tag team arena battle, where instead of a single 4v4 battle, you can do a best of 3 4v4 battle utilizing all of your champions. Okay, now I'm done. Wait, that, that's it? There's no special offer from our audience to go to the link in my description and download Raid Shadow Legends? Oh no, there is, but that's your job to say. You're the influencer, not me. Peace in the Middle East home skillet. How dare she. <laughs> Thanks to Raid for paying my bills this month. Guys, you know the skinny. If you click on the link in the description, new players will get 50,000 silver, 50 gems, 5 mystery shards, and more. But most importantly, one free champion 
Hexweaver. Again, to get all this, you have 30 days to click on the link. So don't you go procrastinating like you do on your girlfriend's birthday gift, all right? Shame on you. But uh, I think it's finally time to make this decoration feature. I first started off by opening up Coromon in Unity, starting a timer, and then I started to give a demonstration to everyone on the live stream. But then, <laughs> I ran into a really strange bug. What? Hold on a second. Why is this broken? Alright, already two minutes in, and uh, welcome to programming, folks. I don't know why it's broken. This bug was so bad, that I had to revert back to a previous version of my code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open Coromon back up and pray for the best. <laughs> the stream might end a lot earlier than, than I wanted it to. But let us... What? That didn't work. I've never had anything like this ever. It was driving me insane. I even meticulously checked my code, line by line, trying to figure out the problem. But I couldn't find the issue. What does that mean? I don't know how to solve this. This is so bizarre. This is absolutely bizarre. With about almost an hour passing and my mind slowly deteriorating, I was about to give up on the stream. So here's where we're at. It's been, it's been 42 minutes and there has been no solution, no progress. I haven't even started writing the function itself. I got owned <laughs> today. I don't know what the hell is going on. I have no clue. I've never seen this. Ever. So what I'm gonna do is uh, we're gonna we're gonna end the stream here shortly. Until a user by the name of Petit Joe commented on what they thought the problem was. But are you sure you want to hear it? Make sure you're sitting down for this one. Petit Joe, if this is what has been plaguing us for almost 50 minutes now, a toggable button, I'm going to lose my. Shit. This is what you're looking out for. If you see an egg in a small room and not a just solid yellow background, Petit Joe is right. Oh my god, here we go. Oh, oh. Please be true. Oh, no. I am completely over this profession. You have got to be kidding me. Look at the timer. 50 minutes was lost because of a small little toggle in the UI. I, I genuinely do not know what to say. Yep. A small little toggle button in the UI costed us an hour. <laughs> How was it toggled on in the first place? I have not a clue. But welcome to programming, everyone. But now with that out of the way, Petit Joe saved the stream. And we pushed forward with finishing the decoration feature. First order of business was making a checklist on how we can go about finishing the feature. And then we started off this feature by basically duplicating the room and all of its items in there, but without the Cormon. Because you don't want the Cormon walking around while you're moving stuff. It could cause problems. Let's do this. And there we have it. Next, we have the ability to move these duplicate items around in the room. I want this to be here. You see that? I want this to be here. Look at that. I want to be in the corners. Look at it. Look at it. Are you looking at it? Then we made these items snap to a grid. And let's see. Nice. Nice, dude. But because all this was happening in a duplicate room, it wasn't saving. So we added the saving function. Let's give it a try. Let's see what happens. Move it over there. Oh! <laughs> However, we were still able to pull items out of bounds. We still need a clamp because I can do this but I shouldn't be able to. So we fixed that bug. Dog, look at it. Dog, are you looking at it? Are you looking at it? But just when we thought we were done, oof, is it just like they combine? Is that where they're going? We found a bug where if you were to place an item over another one, one of them gets deleted. So we fixed it. Look at that. Look at that. Look at it. I don't think you guys are looking at it. I don't, I don't think you guys are looking at it. Look at it. Look at that! And the feature was completed. Uh, or so we thought. I completely forgot about being able to rotate objects. Because having all objects face in one direction is mighty boring. So we got to work in adding that. But this addition took the most amount of time. A lot of my scripts needed a good amount of work to support this. But eventually, we got it working, of course. Yes, it's time. The feature is completed. And at last, we're actually 
done. Actually, wait, no, not yet. There was one final thing that I needed to add. You see, you can upgrade the size of the room that your Coromon live in, but the decoration system didn't account for this. So I had to code up an interpolation curve and set the camera's distance depending on the size of the room. It wasn't a perfect interpolation, but it got the job done. And at last, a little under five hours, we were done done. It feels so good to finally be done. I then swiftly ran to get some snacks because that was a world record for me. <laughs> Shouts to everyone who joined the stream. And at last, want to see the feature demonstrated? Don't worry, I got you. All right, as you can see here, we have little yellow Quormon, uh, but currently it's trapped in this little space. We just bought a bunch of stuff and it was just randomly placed in this room. But thanks to this new feature, we can clean up this room and give it a little more space. Let's uh, move all the cabinets over here to the wall. Let's make them face outwards. Let's get the plants into the corners. That looks good. Let's align the tables. Uh, let's get the chairs, set up a little dining area. And then we can put all these boxes up against the wall for now. Boom, look at that. That looks beautiful. And if we want to take a step further, we can then put all these into the inventory space. And bada bing, our Coromon now has a bunch of room to run about and uh, have as much fun as it wants. Look at them all happy. So, what did we learn today, kids? Late game development is the absolute worst. From not knowing that a pause on error button is on, to forgetting how to use libraries that you wrote yourself. Just remember this and you'll be fine. No matter where you're at in your game dev journey, everyone struggles. That's just the nature of programming. There's so much to learn. Anywho, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for the sponsor. Check them out if you want to help support the channel. And make sure to download Coromon when it releases on Zach.